What's up everyone, April Dunham here. In this Template Tuesday video, I'm going to walk through some updates that I've made to the timesheet application based on your feedback. One of the big things you all requested was the ability to copy entries from a previous timesheet into a new one. So I've added that in addition to a few design tweaks, and we'll also learn about the new sequence function and how I've used that to improve the performance of the app. I'll walk you through how to implement these changes coming up. So I want to thank everyone for giving feedback on the timesheet app and giving me some ideas on ways that I can improve it. So just to level set, this is the original timesheet app that I had built. So you had a landing screen uh, with a little left navigation. We could add a new timesheet here. You'd have to select the day of the week to start with and then click next. And that would take you to the main screen where you would select, you know, the client this is for, put in the dates and you can see your existing timesheets, select from the list fill out the information and submit for approval. So I've went through and one of the first things you'll notice that I did is I've made kind of an overhaul of the look and feel. So hopefully this looks a little bit better. Um, the, I got rid of the left nav and I have this landing screen with the three main functions of the app. So you'd either be creating a new timesheet, viewing your existing timesheets to finish or managing approvals. And for the new timesheet process, I got rid of the calendar and consolidated that all into one screen. Because as we know, less clicks is always better. So instead of having to select the start of the week that you're submitting the time for, instead I've added this drop down control and in it, I'm getting the previous four or five weeks and the next several weeks and I'm defaulting that to the current week. So this is kind of similar to if you've ever used QuickBooks and the way that they approach it for entering time. So you can select the period that you're wanting to submit the time for from this drop down and then enter in the information. So this functionality is really similar to what I had already built out. And this dropdown is made possible thanks to that new sequence function. And I'm going to show you what you can do with that here in a second. The other main piece of functionality that I did add was the copy functionality. So you'll see this copy button. So if we click this for wanting to submit a new timesheet, and I know that I'm working with the same clients that I worked with last week, so rather than having to go in and fill that all out manually, we can click copy, select the week's timesheet that we want to copy from. And then you notice as soon as we do that, it's pre-populating the timesheet with those values. So we can just override that as needed and tweak it and save and submit. The other thing that I did is made a little bit of an improvement to the My Timesheets section so that you can see the status of the timesheets in question, whether they're pending or approved or rejected. And on the approval section in the old application, if we go back to that, it was listing out the individual weeks separately instead of consolidating it for everyone on your team. So what I have did is now if we go to the new timesheet approval section, we just see the week for which there's pending timesheets for, and we can click on that and it's going to consolidate timesheets for everyone that you manage. So you see that there's an employee field on here now compared to the old application where it's just built to and it was separated out for each different job. Now you have a nice consolidated screen to do easy, simple approvals. So now that I've kind of gone over the main changes of the app, let me show you how to implement some of these. For the home screen, all that I did to kind of clean up the UI and the look and feel of that is I've added in a gallery and I've went and uploaded several images. So we know that we have some of the built-in icons with Power Apps that we can use, but when possible, I like to upload my own images just because it makes it pop a little better. So I've went to the media and I've uploaded three different images. And in the gallery, I've added an image control, a circle control, which sets behind the image and a label for the name. And if we look at the gallery's items property, You'll see I'm just hard coding a table and I'm mapping the images, the names, and the page which these should navigate to when you click them. The only other thing you might have noticed is as I hover over these, I have a pointer. Now, normally in a gallery, we don't have pointers like this. 
That's something that I've added just to give a better user experience so that the users know as they hover over these that these are clickable objects. So I've kind of tricked the UI by adding in an HTML control. So if you go to insert input, there's an HTML text control. And all that I did here on the HTML is if you look at its HTML text property, I've added a blank div. And if you set cursor pointer, that formats it so that when you hover over it, it has a pointer instead of the regular cursor. And I've just set the width and the height of this to be the same as my gallery object so that anywhere I hover over this item, the cursor pointer will show. So a small little thing that you can do to help the user experience. The next thing I want to talk about was the sequence function. So one of the things that I did with this that I really wanted to improve was the performance. There was a lot of stuff going on in the back end to get the week start because it was actually kind of an involved process to get the Monday start of the weeks for each of these different timesheets. When I initially released this template and video about it, that was before this new function called sequence was released. And what sequence allows us to do is get a sequence of numbers or values. So for example, as we're seeing here, we can use a for all, then use the sequence function and pass how many values are you wanting to get. So in this case, we're getting 10. And then we can add that to a collection and get 10 random numbers. You can also use this in combination with your date formula. So that's how I'm using that in my timesheet template. So as you can see here in the documentation, we can say for all, we can get a sequence of 10, and then we can use date add, pass in today's value, and it will get 10 days from the current date. So if you're new to sequence and haven't used it, definitely check out this documentation to kind of get up to speed on that. So shout out to Dean who commented on my timesheet video pointing out that I could use the sequence function to help improve how I get the week start and weekend. So I did take his advice for sure. And what I've did to implement this in my app is first, if we look at the app on start, you'll notice that this code is cleaned up quite a bit. You'll see that I'm using the concurrent function because that's a good function to use for performance as well. You can group a set of formulas so that they'll be called in parallel rather than sequentially. So I have one formula here that I'm using to get the current user information. And then you'll see I'm using another formula to set a global variable called current Monday because I'm using in the timesheet the week to start on Monday. And I'm just using this simple formula of a date add, passing in today, doing some multiplication to get the weekday so I can get the Monday of the current day. Now, if we look below that, you see this is where I'm using the new sequence function. So I'm setting a global variable called weeks list. And you'll see where I'm going to be using this here later on. But I'm doing a for all so that I can loop through the sequence. And I'm getting a sequence of 20, so 20 total items. Then I'm going to use that same day formula to get the current Monday of the week. And I'm going to subtract 28 from that so that I can get the prior few weeks before this current Monday because I wanted to give the ability in the timesheet if we go back and look at the application here so that you can go back a few weeks. So maybe if you forgot to enter your time for last week or the week before, I wanted to give you the ability to go back about four weeks or so to enter in time for a previous week. So that's why we're doing minus 28 and we're getting in seven day increments so we can get a full week. And then we have to tell it when to start. So we're using the year formula so we can get the year from the current date using the today function. Then we're going to get the month of the current date and then we're going to pass in that value of our, from our for all in sequence. So now that I have this, thanks to our sequence formula, I can use this in our new timesheet screen. So if I go to time card new and we'll take a look at that new drop down that I added and look at its items property, you see that I'm pointing this to that weeks list value that I set on the app on start thanks to the sequence function. And I'm just adding a column. So I'm going to add a column called weekend because that function's getting the week start, but I need to calculate what the end date is so that I can show that in this drop down. So to do that, we just use a date add formula, pass in the value, and we're going to add six days so that we can get the ending of the week. And then I'm adding one more column called week display because I want to show in the drop down the start and the end date. So we're just going to do some formatting to take the value. And then we're going to add in the text to, and then get that date end. 
So the last thing that I wanted to show you in this video of improvements is the duplicate function. So on the time card new screen, I went in and I've added an icon. I just used the copy icon there. And one thing I'm doing is I'm doing the dialog box approach that I've shown in previous videos. So when I click this icon on the on select, you see I'm updating a context variable called copy dialog to true. So what that's going to do is I have a group of objects. So this group of underlying objects being two rectangle controls, a icon for close, a label, and then a gallery that are all grouped together will display. Because if we look at that group's visible property, you see it's tied to that copy dialog. So if it's true, it's going to show. If it's false, it's going to hide. So that's how we're getting this pop up. And in here, what I'm doing is I'm surfacing up a gallery and I'm tying that to a list of items for timesheets that are tied to my account. But one thing where I'm doing, if you look at the items property of this gallery is we're using the group by function. So because when we submit these timesheets, if we look at the backend database for each record, it's actually a new line item in the SharePoint list. So I don't want to see like three different rows for July 20th. So that's why we need to use the group by because I only want to get one entry in that gallery for July 20th, for example. And that's what the group by function allows us to do. So we can use group by and I'm using that in combination with sort by columns just to sort this list by week start descending. And I'm tying that to my time entries list and I'm using a filter. So it's only going to get items where the employee value is equal to me. So I'll only get my entries and I'm going to group by the title field because the title field is what holds the week start week end information. And I'm going to call this grouping week. So week's actually going to contain a subset of entries for the current grouping. So in the gallery, it's just going to look like this. I'm going to have one entry for the week of the 29th and one for the 20th, so on and so forth. And when I select that, it'll be a subset of entries. So the next piece to get this copy to work is I have this icon here. So when we click on that, if we look at its on select property, See, I'm setting a global variable called copy items, so items that we want to copy, and I'm setting it to this item.week. So since we use group by, if I do this item, you see that the only option we have, so we have title because that's the, the label that's showing, the week, start, weekend. But then the only other option we have is week because that's the subset of entries. So this is actually going to be a collection of items that match that current week, start, weekend. And then I'm just going to update the collection that I already have for this new entry screen and add in these items to that collection. So I have a collection in the back end called new time entry. So when we say add new timesheet, it's newing up a blank collection called new time entry. So this will essentially replace that blank collection with whatever we have here in the copy items from the value that we selected. So once I select one of these, click close, It'll copy those into the gallery and then I can change anything else that I need to about it. So I can add a new one here if I need to. I can change the data in some of these. And if you change your mind, like maybe you selected the wrong week, you can always come back into the copy, choose a different week and it will update that. So this type of duplicate functionality can really come in handy for multiple different applications. And to do that, you will have to rely on collections. Those are the main things that I wanted to show you for improvements to this particular template. I'll include a link to this new version of the Power App in the video notes so that you can download this. If you have any ideas for other templates or videos, please let me know, drop a note in the comments. And if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.